Welcome to episode number seven of the Mastering Marriage Podcast, where our goal is to strengthen, unite, and restore your marriage. My name is Amanda Taylor, and together with my husband, David, we are the co-founders of MendOurMarriage.com, and our goal is to break the back of divorce by bringing married couples together to be accountable, keep the passion alive, and expose the hidden issues that try to rip marriages apart. All right, let's go, y'all. Hey, guys. Welcome back. Welcome. I know we took a brief hiatus. Uh, We had some things come up, and we had to attend to those, and uh, we're back. And this is episode number seven of the Master and Marriage Podcast. And so yeah. uh, hopefully you guys had time to catch up to uh, episodes number one through six. If not, pause this or actually stop this and go and listen to the other episodes. Then come back and hang out with us on episode number seven. Um, but anyway, before we get started with the listener's question today, <laughs> I messed that one up. With the it's listener's right. question today, I would like to let you guys know that this episode is brought to you on behalf of MendOurMarriage.com. And we would like to let you guys know that we have tons and tons of resources on the website, blog posts, podcasts, like the ones you're listening to now. We also have an excellent membership community. Um, And our community is made up of three different packages uh, where you can get just the videos that we offer all the way up to weekly coaching and counseling with us. So uh, feel free to take a look at those. You can go to the website at www.mendourmarriage.com slash membership. And that will give you access to the information so that you can choose which one would be a best or the best investment for your marriage. Okay, so now that we're done with that, let me let you guys know what we're going to do today. So I'm going to read a question. Actually, Mandy, you want to read the question? That's fine. Mandy's going to read the question because she, you know, she enunciates it better than I do. Um, (laughs) Pronounces words better than I do. Uh, But anyway... um, we're going to read the question, and this question is a little different, So, but we'll talk about why, what makes this question a little different once we're done reading it. So, Mandy, go ahead and read it, and then uh, we'll get back with you. Okay, here we go. What do you do when you have absolutely no physical attraction to your spouse? I've found myself avoiding sex for the longest, and when I do indulge, I do it solely for him. And I try to get it done as fast as I can without him realizing that's what I'm doing. I really want a divorce, but I'm not financially stable enough to do so. He deserves to be happy, and so do I. Yeah, so this is a, this is a loaded question. Yes, it really is. And um, we, we kind of debated whether or not we should read it because the person is overtly saying they want a divorce. Right. But we figured that this question or the type of issues that's going on in this question is pretty common Mm -hmm. you know in terms of attraction and losing attraction towards your spouse Mm -hmm. um and so we're gonna we're gonna say that we're gonna answer this question but we're gonna give a clause to it and the clause is this the things that we recommend will only work if you're interested in saving your marriage exactly and so this person who asked has who asked me this question i'm gonna email this to you when we're done um, but And I'm saying this specifically to you, but also to everybody else who's listening. This information, these resources will only work if you're interested in saving your marriage. So if you're trying to find a way out and the only thing that's stopping you is financially you know, being able to do it, then this is not going to work for you. So right. you have to really be serious about mending your marriage. That's what we're here. Yeah, no pun intended. What we're here for. <laughs> and so, so just know that these answers of the questions that we're uh, answering this the, the information is only going to work if you're interested in saving your marriage so with that being said uh let's talk about some tips first before we get into the like things that we want to give you the steps to help you get that attraction back um and, and i'll start with this first one and it's kind of going what I, off of what i just said you have to have a divorce is not an option mentality you literally when you're married you have to have that mentality. You can't right. have divorce as an option because if it's an option, it's an option. Right. And it'll always be an option. Right. And you can't say, okay, this is one of the options that we can use when deciding what to do with this marriage. No, divorce has to not be an option. It can't right. be an option. What do you right. think, baby? I agree. I agree. 
unless you fear for your life yeah. or you feel like, you know, you're fearing for your children's life or something exactly. like that. Marriage is hard work. Yeah. And so, you know, if there is a chance to be able to work on things and reconcile, then definitely that should be the, the first and foremost action that you should take. Yeah, yeah. Give your marriage an opportunity to succeed. Give your marriage an opportunity to grow. Give well. your marriage an opportunity to experience love. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you was going to go with another one of those. Oh, uh, you know, <laughs> no. hey, I did. <laughs> but, but, no, I, I mean, we're laughing, but this is a serious matter because yeah. Mandy and I were there and I wrestled with the same issue on a diff- well, a similar issue regarding attraction, but it was not physical because my baby bad. It, it had it was more of an emotional chemistry thing that we were struggling with, uh, but exactly. nonetheless, I still at that time had divorce as an option, right. and I had to close that door completely in order to move past that door. Mm-hmm. As long as it's open, it'll suck you to it, and you can't have that door open and expect to fix your marriage. Exactly. Yeah. So just just remember that. What's the second tip, baby? Well, the second tip is you can't put physical attraction and love for your husband on the same page. Ooh, that's good. Because love is a choice. That's good. So just think about it like this. Um, Well, first of all, I know when you got married, you were physically attracted to Mm -hmm. your spouse. But think about it like this. If something happened, like some type of freak accident or some some type of tragic accident, Mm -hmm. and they were no longer able to be physical with you, would you leave them? That's a good question. You know, so you have to think about that. It has to be deeper. Yeah. It has to be deeper. And we have to choose to love our spouses every day. Yeah. And there are going to be times in your marriage where both of you may feel like you're not physically attracted yeah. to the other person. And that's going to happen more than one time while you're married. Yeah. I always refer to the love stories and I say it's not going to look like the notebook or <laughs> love and basketball. You know, you didn't see when they struggled. Mm-hmm. And a real marriage is going to have struggle. Yeah. That's you good. know, so you have to, again, make that choice every day to choose to love and go with the changes and the ebb and flow of your relationship. Yeah, yeah. Both of you are going to grow. Both of you are going to like different things, you change. know, as the years go on. Yeah. You might you might have liked it all, you know, wild and, and bouncing off the walls when you first got married. And you might like it a little bit more, you know, smooth and easy now. But okay. you have to communicate those things to each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and people change, you know, and attraction changes. And you have to know that going in, attraction will change. And attraction, physical attraction, is only surface deep. It's not deeper than the surface. But your love has to go deeper. It has to. Right. And it has to be with no conditions on it. Exactly. No clauses. So good. That was really good, baby. I like that point. Uh, Here's another tip before we get into the steps to help you get your attraction back. Remember that marriage is all about giving. And we cannot hammer this nail enough. Right. Marriage is all about giving. So if you're finding yourself uh, avoiding sex, then you you know you're not giving. So you're not even giving the marriage any chance to grow. Because whatever you give, think of it like this. Whenever you give, those are seeds that you are planning to produce future fruit. Future fruit. I said that like oh. dad. That's, that's Otis. Dang it, dad. He, he, okay, anyway, I'm not going to get on there. I mean, let me say this again. <laughs> when you give, you are planting seeds that produce future fruit for your marriage there you go. and if you stop giving you disconnect the reproduction process of your marriage exactly so you have to give because those are the seeds that's going to ensure future fruit <laughs> <laughs> and i'm sure you know you have to understand and i mean i'm sure we all can feel vibes yeah. and i'm sure that even though you think he doesn't know that's what you're doing yeah. i guarantee you i could put money on it he oh, does yeah. know oh yeah he can feel that energy from you yeah because you know having sex and making love with your spouse is it connects you it connects you spiritually and physically mm-hmm. you know and on a deeper level so if you are avoiding he knows you if you are trying to hurry up and get through it he knows yeah. it yeah yeah He just may not be saying anything. So reprogram yourself to think about giving first. You can't, and and we don't know the conditions, all the variables of the marriage. And so if hopefully, God forbid, there's nothing major that, you know, puts your health, your health in harm's way. And so if it's not that serious and you have to, you have to, and I'm not minimizing your experience, but you have to think about giving first. Exactly. And just think about it like this, even though it may be hard. Yeah. Um, you know, you have to try and give your all, Yes. you know, as much as you possibly can. 
and and just give and you know saying it will hurt to give sometimes i mean i can just say for myself i like that baby it will hurt to give sometimes, sometimes it hurts to which give. means it's a sacrifice exactly that's good exactly and i know for me you know during the time when david and i you know were having during the time when david and i were going through our mm-hmm. our issues and david was feeling like you know he was not physically attracted to me um or the chemistry was not there yeah. i still had to make a decision to still be intimate with my husband, even though I knew he felt like that. Yeah. You know, and it did pay off in the end. Yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. And that little noise was Mandy's computer. (laughs) Sorry. But anyway, so let's move to the steps to help you regain attraction. Because a lot of these deeper issues we're going to be talking about in the Members Only podcast. Um, And so, but we, we want to keep it at around 15 minutes for this one. So here's four steps to helping you regain the attraction. Uh, I'll just start with step number one. All right. Is figure out what the deeper issues are in the marriage that may have caused you to want a divorce in the first place. Figure out what those... Because whatever those deeper issues are, they're serving as distractions and blockages that's really causing you not to look at your husband the way you used to look at him. Exactly. It's diluting your ability to be attracted to your husband. So if the issue is his financial, uh, I guess inadequacy or if, if, if he has gained some weight or if he's lost himself in his job or whatever those issues are that's causing you to want a divorce, those things will affect your, affect your attraction towards your husband. Right. And you can't lump them all together if it's really a deeper issue that's causing you to want a divorce. Exactly. So figure that out. You take some time with yourself, by yourself, pray, okay? Mm-hmm. Make sure you pray and get the truth. Mm-hmm. And once you get the truth, see it for what it really is. Exactly. What's step number two, baby? Step number two is figure out what triggered the change in your attraction towards your spouse. Yeah. So um, what I want you to do is just kind of backtrack and see when exactly it was that you started feeling this way towards your spouse. Yep. And see what was missing, what changed, what did he stop doing, what did you stop doing, what, what did, did you... Y'all? Exactly. <laughs> what did both of you uh-huh. stop doing? That's good. You know, were you dating each other? Were you flirting a lot? Were you, you know, were you... Um, going out and just spending more quality time Were with you each other. working out together? <laughs> wink, wink. I'm sorry. I throw that in there. <laughs> oh, but, but yeah, just, just re- retrace your steps yeah. and see where the problem started so that you can start there to see how you can solve exactly. the problem. And I guarantee that when you do that, you will find something that y'all stopped or you stopped or he stopped doing. Exactly. You will find it. You just got to go looking. Exactly. And you always get the right answer when you ask the right question. Right. So make sure that you keep looking. Step number three is this. Communicate with your spouse how you feel. So talk about how you really feel about him. Share with him where you feel you like your attraction has gone in. And what areas. Is it physically? Is it just sexually? Is it emotionally? You know, was it the chemistry thing like it was between Mandy and I? Talk about that. Make sure you use the right verbiage and the right language. You don't want to make him feel insecure or worse than what he already feels, but communicate with him. Be open, right? right. This is one of the key components of a healthy relationship is healthy communication. Yes, and just make sure that the timing is right. Yeah, right You want time. to make sure that you don't just, you know, maybe just spill the beans on him when he just gets home from work, long day. Yeah. Or, you know, just, you know your husband. You know when's a good time to talk. So yeah. just be, you know, aware of that. Exactly. And so, baby... Now, you can bring in the rear with the last step. Yeah, so the last step, number four, would be uh, become intentional with giving love to your spouse. So after you have, you know, after you have implemented the first three steps and actually went through through those, I would say definitely go ahead and, you know, um, set up date nights and, you know, set up times for you all to be able to talk and communicate on a more regular basis so that something like this does not build up again. Yeah, yeah. You know. Speak your you speak your spouse's love language. Be intentional about that. Right. If his love language is a uh, quality time, be intentional about filling his love tank. Right. You know, do things that will make you less of the focal point and make your husband more of a focal point. Right, and that's something that you that you both will have to do in yeah. order to, you know, for the marriage to be healthy. Exactly, exactly. So there we go. Um, we're we're coming close to fifteen minutes, so I just want to let you guys know that we definitely appreciate it. 
Um, I will be emailing this to you, so respond back to me via email or voicemail. Let me know what works, what's happening, what's going on. And guys, keep the questions coming, okay? Uh, keep we got we keep getting uh, emails. We need some more voicemail messages as well, so keep those coming in. Lastly, make sure that you go to iTunes and subscribe, download, but also leave an honest rating and a review. We've gotten some more reviews, or I'm sorry, some more ratings. Please give us more reviews. The more reviews we get, the more likely we are to be exposed to more people. Right. Okay? So we're done, guys, until tomorrow. We appreciate your time. Thanks, everyone. We out, y'all. Deuces. Deuces.